So this poor microchip here has seen better days. It's only got half of its legs left and has totally exploded. So we're going to replace that and replace the holder as well. It's a CA1458 which is a dual op amp. I don't know what it's actually doing in the circuit but we'll have a look around and see if anything else might have caused that to happen or if it's just the chip itself. Right, to remove the actual chip holder you can do it the old fashioned way with a solder knife and a bit of wick. It takes a little while but it gives you the same results as a solder sucker. This is just a soldering iron with a hole down the centre of it and when you pull the trigger it creates a vacuum and sucks the solder up there. They're not fantastic but for about 70 quid, 75 pound, you know it's a pretty good tool to have. It's very handy, saves a lot of time and effort and all you do is choose what you require and suck the solder up into here. Right, that is loose enough now to just pull out of the board. Yeah, and that's uh, pretty badly damaged that is. So, you see I've just pulled it over without even checking which way pin 1 went, but luckily it's written on the board as well with that little dot there. So, we're going to put a nice new one, I'm sure it doesn't matter what colour it is, directly on the board and it won't, ah, it does go through the hole, thank god for that. Now I don't really like bending the pins over because it's not fair on the next person who has to try and take it off. So I've put a little bit of solder onto one of the pins and then the one opposite and then hold it with my finger and push it in into place and just do all this a moment make sure I've got the right thing I could be pushing on the wrong chip there just heat them up and push them into place and it just snaps into place now just finish those off And there is a nice new chip holder in place. Now we're going to stick the chip in and see if it explodes. Right, you Wersey, 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 Wersey owners know that along the back here is an easy access panel. You undo the five screws and just pull this panel down. This is what I like about this old keyboard, organ. There's lots of little ways to gain entry into it. This is all the inside of this thing. Oh, so beautiful technology. Oh dear, oh well. Yeah, don't get excited Marcus. Right. We're going to put in the WM8 board again uh, and then we'll fire it up just quickly and just do a little temperature sense on the chips just in case the whole thing goes bang. We don't want to have any more faults. Handy little tool that might give you a clue that something is about to explode is one of these Fleur infrared heat cameras. So what I'm going to do is this is the little fuse. I know it's a resistor before anybody tells me but it's used as a fuse for some strange reason. That's the piece that heats up first. So I'm going to get this on here and watch that fuse and get Jason to switch on the keyboard and when I say stop I want him to switch it off. So, right here goes. Three, two, one, on. Mm, it's getting warm, but it's not smoking. It's not smoking yet. Actually, it is quite hot. 
not that hot, but the board that we've just put in there. No, there's nothing cooking there. Everything okay? Seems to be. Oh, what's that thing? That looks pretty warm. No, it's only 16, 16 Celsius. It's just a capacitor on the board there. Oh well. I think, with any luck, we might be okay. And the snare drum will work again. Well, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> we hope, if that's the right chip. Right, okay. Shall we uh, test to see what happens? Yes. Right, let's switch on the amplifier and see what happens. I'm just having a quick look around inside here. Ah, very nice. Okay. Don't play anything that's copyright, please. No. <laughs> Now that was the board for the rhythm unit, so we, this is what we need to try, whether the snare drum works again. Right. Is the snare drum running there? I think so. Let's try one of the other rhythms. I think so, it's hit. Do you mean to say we've actually fixed it? Uh, maybe. I, I need to see if these <laughs> maybe pia uh, piano things are, are, are working. Um, don't go blow it up. No, I know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to. What's that? He uh, never did that before. No, I know. That, those are, that shows that the chords are working again. So that's the chord board as well? Yes. Yeah, that's for the automatic chords for learning, people who want to learn. This is showing all the hot spots in this. Let's just have a look down in that uh, board that we've already fixed once. I no, it looks as if uh, it looks as if everything's going to be okay in there. What's that? Capacitor. Yes, I think, I think everything's working again with those. I think need tuning. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mr. Organaut. Uh. <laughs> yes, I think we've done it at last. We just need a piano tuner now to come around and uh, finish this off, and we should be okay. <laughs> so there ends another day of yet another fix on the Verzi Helios. And. Uh, a friend of ours wondered what these little pots were for along the back of this board here which sits on top of the draw balls. Well, I think they are just for trimming the actual position of the draw ball. So when it's fully in, you will trim the top or bottom pot to the draw ball to where it's fully out. So one will be one end and one will be the other. And then it will know the measurement between one and eight. Uh, I can't really see any other reason why they would be there, but nothing to do with tone changes. It works! Again! God knows for how long. Uh, the trouble is with this vintage gear, uh, it keeps breaking down! But anyway, thank you very much for watching and we shall obviously come up with something new as soon as possible. All the best. Bye.